with these videos, we're aiming to create an online library where if you don't manage to come to Full Circle uh, or any of our events that we think are worth putting up, you can come uh, in your own time and look at this video and learn about the topic. Hey guys, I know this is the last presentation, the most challenging one, so I'll try to make this super technical subject into something that is actually exciting, but it actually is. This is actually about one of the most, the most um, surprising and exciting moments that we had last year. Um, it's about moisture, which is a topic that us in the coffee industry should already be super comfortable and acquainted with. But recently there were some changes in these protocols here that, that are causing really, really big confusions in the, in the coffee market and especially in the communication between producers and also buyers. Well, everyone knows that moisture is an important subject because it can, there are lots of things that can happen to the quality of the coffee and also its capacity to hold its characteristics over time if you don't have the right moisture content. So if you have higher moisture, you can have um, pretty much lots of risks of ocratoxin contamination because the microorganisms are gonna grow and start producing it and ocratoxin is thermoresistant. So after you roast the coffee, you actually drink the ocratoxin and that can cause this problem. And if you have very little low uh, moisture, you have Weight loss, which means for producers, you are selling more beans to get a 60 kilo bag. Or also you have aging, coffee is going to age much faster. You have problems in the roast and the beans, they get very fragile. So while you are sorting the beans through the machinery, they are getting chipped or broken much easily. So our friend over there was saying that uh, if the beans are too wet, they get chipped very easily. But also if they get too dry, same can happen. Well, so this is basics. That's probably the first class we get in coffee. But what, um, what this is about is about, sh about the measuring moisture uh, protocols. So measuring moisture became a very common um, procedure in our industry. So who here owns a moisture meter? Raise your hand. Or the company you work for? Yeah. Most of the people in the room, either because you are a coffee buyer or a roaster or a producer, you have a moisture meter. You want to check if your coffee is in the right moisture level. So this is something that's pretty standard. And I'm going to tell you a horror story that happened with us in the end of 2017. So actually before that, we started getting some complaints about some coffees from one specific client that we were sending our coffees to. When he was receiving our samples, he was measuring the moist of our samples. It was pre-shipped samples, so they, he needed to approve the sample to get the coffee. It's not Wakefield, okay? So <laughs> this client was getting the samples and he was complaining, no, this coffee is too low in moisture. This coffee is too low in moisture, I cannot accept it. So we got a few rejects from, from this client, this specific client, and in the end, he was, when we were saying in different lots, sometimes he would say, okay, this is lightly closer, so I'm gonna take this but it was coming specifically from that client. So we, we tried to look because we were testing the, the coffee samples in our moisture meter device and it was in the perfect moisture measuring level. So it was 11%. Everyone agrees that 11% is the standard moisture level and content for coffee. Okay, so it was 11% in our moisture meter. So we were not understanding. But okay, time went, uh, passed by and a few months later, we started to get these complaints from more places. So Japan, uh, some other places in Europe, still not Wakefield, <laughs> <laughs> kidding. And US, Canada, and so lots of places they were saying that our moisture levels were quite low. And we were testing the moisture content of our coffees in many moisture me measuring devices that we had at the farm and they, they were all looking good. We were roasting the coffee, the coffee was roasting well. And so we couldn't understand what was happening. Really couldn't understand what was happening. Well, so we said, okay, if this is a problem, we have to go to the, to the bottom of it. Let's try to figure out what's happening. So what we started to do, we called our clients and we asked, okay, what moisture measuring device you are using? So there were all these different brands of moisture measuring devices that were produced in different parts of the world. And they sent that to us and we literally, we were so 
annoyed by this problem, we bought one of each. And they're expensive. So, okay, we have like, we, we got like six different moisture measuring devices. We got this very same sample of coffee, and we have put the same sample of coffee in all of them. What was our surprise when all of, no, not this one yet, when all of them were showing different results. Some of them were showing eight point something, some were showing nine point something, some were showing 11 point something, and some were showing 12 point something. Like this wide range, super high. And I said, okay, so this is not, this is not, this doesn't make any sense. So we have to really research uh, on this. So we started to reading, reading lots of papers and talking to lots of specialists in the subject. And we even contacted some of these companies that were producing these moisture measuring devices. Well, most of them told to us that the re all those moisture measuring devices that we have in our labs, they are actually electric capacitive moisture measuring systems. What they do, they put a, an electric current through the beams that simulates the original moisture measuring system, which is an oven. So the beams, they are actually most of the times put into an oven that does an oven test that dries all the moisture and you weight the difference. So they said, why don't you send to a lab and do the oven test? So we looked for a food, a food science institute in Brazil, a very respected one that has lots of experience of coffee. We sent various samples to them that we measured having 11% of moisture, moisture, and we sent to them so they could check for us in this so sad oven test, which is a huge laboratory oven that's specifically for this kind of things. And what was our surprise when we got the reports from them, and all the samples, they had moisture content of 8 point something, or 7.9, 9, super low moisture content. And we were desperate about this. Like Luis, Luis is the CEO of the term, and who knows Luis knows he's very emphatic and energetic, and he was very angry, very, very angry. We, we were really concerned that our quality team was really doing something wrong, and that we, we just harvested a, a whole crop that we were still selling and delivering to our clients, and we were really worried that we were not delivering the quality we always were uh, promising and proud of being delivering to our clients. So we, we, he was even thinking about, you know, sending some people away from the company because this was really serious. We're talking about coffee that should have 11% of moisture and that had eight. So in our heads, what we were thinking, we lost lots of money because we dried the coffee too much, so that's less weight. Uh, this coffee is gonna age super fast and people are gonna have trouble with roasting. So s all those problems, how could we figure that out? But something didn't make sense. I mean, we, have been, we didn't start doing this yesterday. And our quality team also not. We were tasting the coffee, the coffee was tasting good. Nothing was done different from the previous years. So something was not right there. We really started to dig deep down in all the literature you can find. I mean, who came up with the 11%? Uh, what came first, the egg or the chicken? It was pretty much this kind of uh, dilemma for us. And we were looking for that a lot. Even in books from 1929, I mean, really old stuff. There is one, one article that we found that had this information, this little piece of information that said, ISO 6673 different from coffee scale. Like, scales. The coffee measuring, moisture measuring has different scales. So that was the, the thread that we really pulled and then everything came up. So we started doing lots of research in the farm and we have some answers on how to, to, to uh, solve this puzzle. Actually, I'm gonna forward some moments in this thing. <laughs> so actually there are different moisture measuring systems. So we were doing nothing wrong. It was just a very stressful moment before Christmas. <laughs> and we actually could figure it out. So I don't know if most of you know, but actually there are 35 plus methodologies for green coffee moisture determination. Each methodology will display a different result. Of course, some of them are gonna be closer to each other, but really, they're, each of them, they're gonna have some various variances, because they use different systems. Um, the electronic equipment that we use in our labs, 
I mean, who has a laboratory oven, one of the big ones in your lab right now, which makes the official test? No one, right? So you have the moisture, the electronic ones, that actually is, a is calibrated to one of those oven tests. And there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing you have to, do to know is what is the methodology. So just so you have an idea, those are the most common ones. So when we say that coffee moisture levels should be around 11% of moisture, what we're talking about is if you get a coffee sample and you weigh this coffee sample, this coffee is, is dried well, you're going to weigh the coffee sample, you're going to weigh like 10 grams. You put in the oven for a specific amount of hours and then you can remove all the moisture from it and it takes days and days and days and days until it happens, okay? When we remove all the moisture and there is no weight loss anymore, that's because you removed all the water from it. You weigh again and you see the percentage that you lost. This is the, the moisture content that you, that you have in your beans. The thing is, uh, this number, 11%, it was determined a long, long time ago using the Carl Fisher distillation methodology, which is a methodology you, could, you put the beans, it's different from the oven test even, you put the beans in, um, in a solution of chemicals, and this solution of chemicals is going to remove all the moisture, and then you see what was the weight loss, okay? So our moisture measuring devices, the electronic ones, for example, it was, it was using the coffee methodology. So we were talking to them and asking them, okay, guys, so uh, how did you come up with that? What was the calibration that you used for the moisture measures that you are using, and then everyone is using Brazil and in other parts of the world. And they said, these guys are the biggest companies selling moisture measurement systems in Brazil, okay? They said, okay, so the thing is, when we started doing this 50 years ago, there was this company, it's a huge co-op in Brazil, they bought a moisture measuring device in the US, which was called Yonti, very, very old stuff, looks like one of those Frank Stein movies, you know, with the big machines, so they bought this one, they gave to these guys in Brazil, they are a German-Brazilian company, and said, okay, I want you to copy this moisture measuring device and read the same result. So they just copied it. And when I said, okay, but how do you calibrate it? Oh, we calibrate one against the other. So through 50 years almost, they were just calibrating one equipment with the other and just evolving that. So, okay, it was still reading like the first one, but there was no official methodology for this. So it was not one of these. He got just one of the electronic devices and copied the curve, the reading curve of it. Well, and then there are others. This is the another distillation method that you put the coffee inside oil, you boil the oil, you remove the water, and then you have this one here, the desiccation, 1446, that's uh, one of the most, was used in the 30s a lot, it's not used anymore. 1447 is another one, it's an oven test, but it was withdrawn in 2003 because it doesn't, it, it also was decomposing other volatiles. So each moisture measuring system has a different system and none of them are 100% accurate because it's very hard for you to remove this water from the bin. So our electronic moisture measuring companies, each of them, what they did, they chose one of those. And they produced their electronic moisture measuring devices based one on one of those curves, which is okay, it's not, 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 no problem there. But we never know about it. And they actually read very differently. So what is happening now is you also have the partial methodologies. Because when you're talking about these methodologies here, and even we created our own right now, because we, uh, we, we wanted to create something that was easier for people to do. Um, now you have the partial methodologies. As I said, if you're doing the oven test, you put the beans inside the oven, you leave it for apparently 120 hours until you remove all the moisture. That's a long, long time. So for you to do it on a daily basis in a farm or in a lab, that's not practical, okay? So what they did, the ISO, Standardization Office of the World International, they created this methodology here, 
which is the one that most of the moisture meters are using right now. It's the ISO 6673. What it does, you get the coffee you put inside the oven for 16 hours only at 105 degrees. After 16 hours, you don't remove all the water, okay? Just remove part of it. You wait the coffee, and then you see how was the percentage. A coffee that was dried correctly will, dis will display a result of around 8.7 moisture. So that's what it does. The old ones, they were removing all the water of the coffee, but they were taking too long. The number was 11, 11.5. This new one removes a part of the water, and you can sort of connect, correlate those two, like you do with Fahrenheit and Celsius, like you do with centimeters. And you know, you have all these different kinds of methodologies for measuring stuff, and you just do the connections. It's the same thing. This one doesn't remove all the water, just removes a part of it. So that's the confusion right there. Well, so as I was saying, so most measuring system among coffee professionals, they are they use it to use the 11% standard, which is the CAFI methodology. And now what's happening is the ISO 6673 is being adopted as the world methodology for measuring moisture. And we were not informed about this. So how did we find about it when we were doing all these research? We even discovered that in Brazil, starting from October 2017, the Brazilian standardization body has determined that all the moisture measuring devices for coffee, they should use only 6673. None of the producers in Brazil were told about this. Ne nobody, even the Brazilian Specialty Association didn't know about this. And so what did this mean? This was a, a high, high risk for us because if I'm using a new moisture measuring device and I dry my coffee to 11%, I'm not drying enough. I should dry to 8.7, 8.5 to be in the safe zone. So that's the new measuring system. And I don't know if US producers here or US, US coffee buyers here have experienced experience any problems related to checking the moisture of the coffee we're getting and think it's either too high or either too low or looking too wet or looking too dry and then the number is okay. Have anyone experienced something like that recently? Yeah? Yeah? So sometimes you get the sample, you look at the sample, it's looking wet. And then you put in the moisture measuring system, and the number is okay. No, it's 11%. So you just ignore your senses. And you are a coffee professional. You should trust your senses a lot, because that's what you do while you're roasting coffee and look in trusting the number. So that's something that has been happening a lot. But for us farmers, this was also something really concerning, because most of our colleagues in Brazil, they didn't know about this. So they could really literally ruin their whole crop if they were drying their coffee wrong. So this was a very, very sensitive um, topic. So these are, these are some, can you want to go back? Yeah. From. Um, so these are some pictures of the equipment that we actually have at the farm. We have two of the laboratory oven tests in the farm, the desiccators as well. Uh, so we, we could do all these comparisons between the different methods and come up with some conversion charts. So for example, this is a, just so you can see an example of a s random sample that we were doing lots of repetitions uh, in the cafe scale oven test, okay? And I mean, no, this is not the oven test. This is the um, electronic one. We had 10.6 here and then the 6673, 7.5. This was a 16-18 sample, 10.7 and 7.6. Then this is another sample. Oops, didn't move. Yeah, <coughs> sorry. So this was 11.2 and then in the new methodology 8.5, 16-18, 11.1 and then 8.2. This is sort of the correlation that you can make. And we were doing this with dozens and dozens of different coffee samples. So in the end, we, ca we came up with this, um, with this chart here 
to sort of help people understand what is the difference uh, between the different methodologies because it's very confusing. So, for example, when you get your coffee sample, if it's in the 6673 methodology, which is 16 hours, 105 Celsius degrees, and this is all, guys, in the um, ISO website. You can download the, the standardization procedures. They are very complicated to read, but you can read all of that online and then teach you how to do this whole thing. But of course, you can. You have to have the ovens as well to do this. So we bought all these articles. We bought all these standardizations, uh, you know, uh, procedures from ISO to know how to do this. And these are the results that you should expect from the coffee. The safe zone, which is around here, right? Usually in coffee, right? You agree? So the safe zone here should represent that in the new moisture measuring systems. Well, this whole process, I said, it was very stressful. And why was that? We are buying all these moisture measuring devices from many companies, and they are very expensive. And for producers especially, s sometimes they don't have one because they cannot afford to buy one. And well, we were calling these guys, literally. So we're calling many of the m main brands for moisture measuring devices in the world for each of them and talking to the, their engineers. And most of them, they don't know what is the mo moisture measuring device, th 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 the methodology that they are using. Or if they know, is, wo is one of the methodologies that's not considered anymore valid. For example, there was one client of ours that we talked about these, and he said, I, I use this Danish moisture measuring device. So this is the brand. So we were calling the guys. They were not replying, or they were not uh, the, the guy's not here, the guy's not here. We're sending emails, and finally they come back to us, and they say that the moisture measuring device that, that, that they have is actually indexed to the methodology, to this methodology here, which is 1447. This was withdrawn in 2003 because it's not very efficient. He actually, besides removing water, it removes some of the coffee uh, volatile compounds. So we don't have a very precise reading. And then there is another very famous brand, uh, the probably the biggest one in the world. We called them and asked them what was the methodology. They didn't know. And finally, after bugging them a lot <laughs> on this, they gave us the reply that their methodology they, they were using was 6673. But in there, when you look at into their, their materials, in their in their manual, the methodology that they were using was one four four six, which is even older and not efficient to measure moisture. So that's why we're having all these these problems. That's why we're having all these different readings and these communication problems. Okay, this is very scary. Well, anyway, if you use this conversion chart, this is gonna help you a lot to understand these differences and these conversions. You can use these. You should please share these with your producers and among your colleagues as well. But what we're doing right now to make this thing clear, because all this study was done in-house. Uh, we, we had to do something about this, and we had to make it pl public, because otherwise the crop would be compromised. But what we're doing, you want to publish an article about this, so we have a PhD student. She's doing her thesis. We hired her, actually, for this. And she's doing her thesis on this for a whole year. And we are paying for her. We are paying for all the analysis. So she's going to develop this article for us. So pretty much what we are doing. Because we saying this sometimes it sounds a little bit, OK, but these guys are farmers. You know, sometimes it's not going to have the same impact, even though we had all these researchers that were backed up by many, many institutions, universities, and food technology institutes. We had scientists with us doing this. But what we did, we wanted to do this article. So we got the same coffee, exact same coffee. This was last crop. We dried this coffee to different moisture levels. So while we, the coffee was drying, we were picking samples of each every few hours. Then we had the same coffee. It was exactly the same coffee, the same batch. 
we are collecting the samples of the drum dryer as the coffee was drying, so around 14, around 13, 12, 11, 10, 0.5, and uh, 10 flat. Uh, we didn't do more than that because it takes a very, very long time to get to 10. The drier it gets, the more time you need to dry more the coffee. So when people were telling us, and this actually makes more sense now to us, uh, when people were telling that the coffee was too dry, and they were saying this coffee is at 8.5 percent of moisture, for us to dry coffee to 8.5, it takes 15 days in the drum di dryer. So we never did that in our lives. It's impossible to do that to screw up that much. You know, it's not possible to do this. Uh, so we have this sample in different moisture levels, and we have packaged it in jute bag. All of them, all of them in jute bag, all of them in polypropylene bags, all of them in grain pearl bags, all of them in penta bags, which is our own bags, all of that in our penta box. So the total amount of samples that we have are close to 300 samples. So of these coffees dry to different moistures in different packagings, and we store those coffees in our warehouse, and we are checking We are checking moisture percentage. We check that in the first moment, and we're checking that. Water activity. Also, all the chemical and microbiological reactions, not the reactions that happen over time, the microbiological reactions that happen over time in terms of the chemical compounds, microorganisms that are developing there, and then we're leaving the coffee in the initial moment and over time. And one thing that really bothered us while we're doing all these researches in different all the different papers that we, we had about this subject was nobody was talking about cup profile. Everyone is talking about moisture only for um, the purpose of shelf life and reducing the risk of ocrotoxin development or reducing the risk of age. Sometimes they talk about this, it's not very much, but most of, it, mo most of the, the concerns are microbiological threat, which is ocrotoxin. So we are also evaluating this. We evaluated in the first moment the, all the samples by taste, and we are evaluating this over time. So two months, four months, six months, eight months, 10 months, 12 months. And what is happening in those four aspects, in those five packages, in those different moisture levels? So we are checking all of that, not for the purpose of coming up with something, aha, we had this amazing idea, but the main purpose here is creating a, the table, the conversion chart that we can actually present to people that's signed by scientists and that people can actually, you know, share this material as a trustworthy uh, information source. We are in the time six right now. We are still in the time six right now. We are just conducting the, 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 I mean, we have the results for time six. We are just conducting the experiments on time eight right now. Um, so soon, it's gonna take a few more months for us to have this study. But the thing that you have to know right now is maybe there is uh, a communication problem between you and your producer or you and your buyer, and you could communicate about this and solve this problem. And more than that, if you are a coffee producer and you are feeling that you are drying the coffee and it's looking different from it did it before because you changed uh, your moisture mist meter recently, probably not dry enough, or you're drying too much even. And the same thing is uh, for the roasters there in the room. So what we recommend in this case is, first of all, Check what's the ISO protocol your moisture meter use. Look for the manual. If you go on the internet, you put the model, what is the name of the model, what was the company that manufactured it, you can find this information. If you don't find, call them, email them, because they don't answer, really, when they, they feel that they don't, don't have any information. And that's important also, because they're going to feel that they need to provide this information to people. This is very, very important. I'm not going to mention the brands, maybe later, after some beers. <laughs> um, talk, 
talk to your producers about this matter. Check what ISO protocol they are using. There was one of our clients that they made a huge campaign to buy a new moisture meter device for their farmers because apparently their moisture meter device was not working properly. And because, of course, the producer also is a problem always. His moisture measuring device has a problem, you know? Uh, <laughs> but still, lots of, lots of good intentions there. They were making this huge campaign with all the clients to raise the money, you know, to buy for these very poor guys the moisture measuring device. And maybe they didn't have to, because actually we called to the company that was providing the moisture meter device they were using in their roastery. And that's one of the companies that was using an outdated moisture measuring system. So, you know, did they have to spend 10,000 gram in a new moisture meter device for these guys? Maybe not. Maybe they just had to use the table, the conversion chart to convert one another and see if it was dried correctly. Because they said the coffee was ro roasting correct. And spread this conversion char chart, please. I can share this with all of you guys. And when we have the real article, we're going to share this as well. Uh, this is a little bit of the literature as well that was consulted to do this whole study. We spent carnival doing this, which is really, really sacred for Brazilians. Long holiday. But it was worth it, because really it, it brought up this light to this subject that for us was a little bit this moment that we're like, oh my God, we are in the specialty industry. It's in, it was 2018. It's 2018, and we're discussing moisture. Right now, we shouldn't be discussing this. It's so simple. We, we figured it out so much so early. But it's just the communication. It's not about the moisture itself. Europe is already using the new standard. So most moisture meter devices are they are used right now. They are in the 6673. US as well. Uh, Brazil just made the change. We are trying to get this information as much as we can to other producers. So when they buy the new ones, they're going to know that there is a new standard. But if you could please help spreading this word, it would be really, really helpful and probably will help in terms of keeping up the quality. Because if you're getting a coffee that is looking moist, probably it is, and you can get contamination going on there. To dry is very difficult to happen. Very, very difficult to happen. So you shouldn't be too much worried there, but more worried about drying too little. Okay? Thank you. Thank you.